My senior year uh, at the University of Hawaii, we were working on a project involving renewable energy. Um, my team and I, um, there were two other people in my group, uh, formed a team to see if we could come up with some kind of unique idea off of what we had learned to figure out how you can use maybe some of the near shore swells to generate energy as well. Hawaiian Electric was awesome. They were so passionate about it and, you know, willing to help any way. They said, you know, give us a call if you need any advice or assistance with anything. Um, they donated to our project when we designed everything. Part of it is you need to create a budget and, you know, buy all the materials, figure out how you're going to fabricate it. Um, and they helped huge on that side, so we were so appreciative of that. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm kind of on hold with it while we're kind of in this voyage. Um, it's been a lot of work in prepping the canoes and things, and um, right after graduation, it kind of just went straight into departure and planning and, and going around all the islands. So it's still in its ready to test state, and <laughs> I'm waiting to kind of get it out there. And, and see what we can do with it and what kind of data we can get. Uh, in the early stages of the, of the planning this voyage, it, it seemed important educationally that uh, we had uh, two large platforms of learning take place. One was Hokolea being the traditional vessel that's going to be navigated in the old way. No information, no technology brought on board so that uh, it allows our young people to be grounded in their culture, in their ancestry, and in their heritage. But at the same time, the idea was to have a... We used to call it the escort boat. We don't anymore. It would be the other voyaging canoe, the other vow that will accompany us. And that is this <coughs> uh, voyaging canoe called Hiki Analia. Hiki Analia is really a star in the sky that's brother and sister to Hoko, the star Hokulea. She's built as a sailing canoe, but she also performs critical operations in safety and communication in uh, sharing the messages of the canoe um, and she's kind of also acting as an escort vessel. We've always had escort vessels in the past for safety um, and with Hiki Analia we were able to explore an option that was more aligned with kind of the values of the voyage at Mala Mahonua. The thing about that separates this vessel from maybe, maybe any other vessel in the world that we're doing it almost um, Without any, without any carbon footprint, that that the that we have about 120 square feet of solar panels that that, that collect the sun, and we store it in six big lithium batteries and another four 12 volt uh, deep cycle batteries. We use that storage to to power our communications, power our safety programs, power uh, uh, our our documentation, education, and the idea is that. For us to be able to sail within our core values, we couldn't, we didn't want to use fossil fuels. So it's been a, a not an easy task because you don't have the blueprint for uh, this kind of vessel. So it took a lot <clears throat> of enormous hard work and research by our engineers. Uh, and um, and the, the one that's been working at it at the core is, uh, is uh, one of our younger engineers who graduated from the University of Hawaii last year in May, <coughs> who is uh, Lehua Kamalu. Um, on this voyage, uh, I have a couple of uh, kuleana or jobs on board the canoe as we sail down to Tahiti. Um, one of them is I will be participating in uh, learning navigation um, with a number of amazing navigators on board. And we're really, the first time going to go out deep sea on a long voyage and really experience what it's like to kind of find your way just with those clues of nature. Um, another job I have on board is the electronics system. Uh, <laughs> there's uh, pretty much any engineer in the room, you're, you're going to be on electronics. No, um, making sure that's all running properly. This is the first voyage we have a lot of technology on board that allows us to share all of our stories and images and blogs and videos. Um, Google Hangs out with some of the school kids and so all that technology to kind of keep it running and keep it going um, on these traditional sailing canoes is really fascinating and we've had um, interesting challenges along the way in, in building the right sort of power plant to make that work and still be you know friendly to the earth. She is grounded in who she is in her culture and in her language uh, and she can go anywhere on the earth um, and but she always knows her home is and she's the only engineer I know that can find Tahiti by navigation. She's one of our 
top young and navigators. Being a part of this project actually uh, with the canoes and, and when we've sat down with each other and talked about ways that we would malama honor, kind of the biggest issues that we think are facing the earth. I'm always the one that comes up with energy. <laughs> That's that engineer coming out and, and saying, you know, where in that field are we, are we taking care of the earth? Are we finding ways to use more, you know, pleasant ways of powering uh, human needs? For me, I find every avenue possible to engage, you know, the engineering ideas. I think an enormous outcome that I would love to see as a success measure of this voyage is um, more people, more students, more kids, more Native Hawaiian kids especially, um, getting more into fields that allow you to explore engineering and explore science and math and technology. Um, and this is a great way that you can motivate them behind these ideas. It's like, you know, the canoes use these things. Hikianulia uh, and Hokala sail around, but they still have electricity on board, you know. Um, and then it's just kind of, kind of a beautiful way of tying in these modern modern ideas and lessons with, with older, you know, ancient practices.